and justice. Brother Maurice Bishop of Grenada. One of the greatest curses of colonialism was that they, they divided the region according to different metropolitan centers. They taught us different languages and then they made a great play of the fact that you are Dutch speaking, you are Spanish speaking, you are French speaking, you are English speaking, and more recently, you are American speaking. <laughs> And based on this linguistic nonsense, they taught us to hate each other. When we were growing up in school, they used to make us believe that the sun sets only in England. Maurice Bishop was born in Aruba, May 29, 1944. His family migrated to Grenada when he was six years old. Maurice was a very gifted student who was involved in social issues at an early age. Influenced by profound black movements as a youth, Maurice and one of his friends, Bernard Cord, in 1962 founded an organization called Grenada Assembly of Youth After Truth. Maurice eventually moved to London to study law and after attaining his law degree, practiced in the UK for two years. While there, he was the co-founder of a legal aid clinic and developed his interest in campaigns against racial discrimination, especially with black people from the Caribbean living in the UK. Returning to Grenada, Bishop became active in politics. And in 1973, he became head of the New Jewel Movement political party. He was elected to parliament and for several years he held the position of leader of the opposition in the Grenada House of Representatives, opposing the government of Prime Minister Eric Gary and his Grenada United Labor Party. Maurice Bishop wanted to see a change for Grenada and its people. He was frustrated with the exploitation from the likes of Eric Gary. So in 1979, he staged a revolution. We had received information on the Saturday before the Tuesday that the intention of the government was to search us and detain us. We decided to go underground. While we were underground, more information came to us on the Monday morning that the plan was that Gary was going to flee the country, leaving orders to have our leadership killed. We therefore, around 3 o'clock, summoned a council, a meeting of our top cadres, and there and then, the decision was taken that we should move. Did you have outside help in, in staging and mounting this revolution? The process is entirely independent. No outside help at all. Bishop subsequently suspended the Constitution and declared himself Prime Minister of Grenada. As Prime Minister of Grenada, Bishop developed the People's Revolutionary Government and the New Jewel Movement began to shine its light on the world by developing the infrastructure of the country of Grenada. A campaign to eat local has been necessary because colonialism encouraged the people for generations to think that expensive imported food was better. Local foods were symbolic of poverty. In the agriculture sector, the government claimed a 26% increase in exports of cocoa, nutmegs and bananas in the first year. But Grenadians are also being encouraged in a new effort to produce vegetables for self-sufficiency. In just four years, the country developed in a profound manner. This was achieved by nationalizing the country's resources and advancing the development of education of agriculture and medicine. With 400 years of private sector in Grenada and 400 years of 8 million pounds of mangoes falling on the ground and rotting on trees throughout Grenada, it took the PRG to take those mangoes and to can and bottle them, put mango slices, mango juice, mango nectar, nutmeg jelly, tamarind juice, tamarind nectar, and all the other ranges of fruits and juices 
all of them. First of all, research, developed, perfected, and mass produced by the People's Revolutionary Government after 400 years of privacy. He advanced the country more in that short time span than any advancement made under the 300 year rule of colonialism by the British Empire. Much of this advancement occurred with the assistance of Cuba and the political relationships developed between Fidel Castro and Maurice Bishop. The People's Revolutionary Group continued the work developing the country with plans of increasing one of their major exports, tourism. Welcome to the island of Green. They hope to continue expanding the industry of tourism and agriculture by building an international airport. With financial assistance from Russia and Cuba, this airport would help to increase the economic infrastructure of Grenada. Grenada is a fun and welcoming place for singles, couples, and families. Come to Grenada and put some spice in your life. But this put the country of Grenada on the radar of the Ronald Reagan administration in 1980, fearing the rise of another communist nation. The world has changed. Today, our national security can be threatened in faraway places. It's up to all of us to be aware of the strategic importance of such places and to be able to identify them. Having another nation not under the control of European domination and successful could spread, causing a threat to global white supremacy. And that was in the plans for Maurice Bishop and Fidel Castro to build their nation and begin to connect and help other nations become self-sufficient and fight off the claws of white supremacy. But well, the fact of the matter is that they come from, they tell us they're speaking Dutch, do the best, this is English, do the best, French is the best, Spanish is the best, American is the best, and all of us hating each other. When in fact we are one people from one Caribbean. Therefore, as one of our historic duties and responsibilities to pull down these artificial barriers of colonialism <laughs> and to develop that one and that we, that we, that we, we believe it is critically necessary for our association with all of our people. That is why I have done state visits to Mexico, to Venezuela, to Panama, to Cuba, to Nicaragua, to Ecuador. The reason has been a conscious attempt on the part of this new government to try to build those bridges and to make sure that all of this alienation of the past disappears. And for the Ronald Reagan administration, of course, this was a major problem. The Reagan administration would launch a propaganda campaign against Bishop and the New Jewel movement that would cut into their tourism finances with the goal of crippling the economy. In 1979, trouble came to Grenada. Maurice Bishop, a protege of Fidel Castro, staged a military coup and overthrew the government which had been elected under the Constitution left to the people by the British. He sought the help of Cuba in building an airport which he claimed was for tourist trade, but which looked suspiciously suitable for military aircraft, including Soviet-built long-range bombers. And Ronald Reagan didn't stop there. We have to struggle as people who are being destabilized every day to get people out there to understand the really devastating effects of propaganda. According to the Bureau, it had received complaints about mass torture being practiced by the bishop government. You get and it this whole question of, of the disinformation being hidden behind the facade of a free press and a free media generally. Maurice Bishop was fully aware of the tactics of white supremacy, increased propaganda to gain mass support to justify invading and crushing the self-determination and independence of other nations. In exactly the same way that they have had to move the violent force against other popular progressive revolutions around the world. They are right now, right now, this very minute, 
sitting down and planning the final stages of their armed attack against our revolution. Unfortunately, inner strife in the New Jewel movement developed, and this split was spearheaded by a longtime comrade of Bishop, once considered a friend, Bernard Cord, along with General Hudson Austin. Cord was serving as the revolutionary government's Minister of Finance, Trade and Industry, as well as the Deputy Prime Minister under Bishop. A dispute developed within the senior ranks of the party. A majority faction of the party's Central Committee, under Cord's leadership, demanded that Bishop either step down or enter into a power-sharing agreement with Cord where both men would share control of the government. Bishop and his faction refused this lead to an overthrow, but was eventually placed under house arrest during the first week of October 1983 by Cord. This did not sit well with the people of Grenada who Maurice Bishop had been fighting for. Large demonstrations on various parts of the island broke out demanding Bishop's freedom and restoration. During one demonstration, the crowd freed Bishop from house arrest. Bishop made his way to the army headquarters at Fort Rupert, known today as Fort George. Once Bishop was freed, the plans from Cord and Austin backfired. They dispatched a military force. Fighting broke out, many civilians were killed and Bishop, along with seven others, including cabinet members, were captured. General Hudson proclaimed himself head of the Revolutionary Military Council. Later on the evening of October 19th, they were executed by a four-man People's Revolutionary Army firing squad. This was the opportunity that the Reagan administration had been waiting and preparing for and quickly took advantage of the inner strife taking place. The United States then launched Operation Urgent Fury on October 25th. Hudson Austin's military government was removed and constitutional government resumed afterwards with the claim of protecting U.S. citizens in Grenada and saving the world from the evils of communism. Neighboring Caribbean democracies, the brave young soldiers, sailors, marines, and airmen accomplished their mission. They went to Grenada not to conquer, but to liberate, and they did. They saved the people, they captured tons of Soviet military equipment, and they averted a hostage crisis before it happened. United States, as it happens, didn't have much interest in or concern with Grenada until uh, Maurice Bishop uh, and the uh, Revolution of 1979. Now, that was under the Carter administration, you'll recall, the Human Rights Administration, the peak of humanitarianism. Uh, the, Carter the Carter administration was bitterly antagonistic to the Grenadian, Grenadian Revolution from the first minute and reacted exactly the way the United States reacts to all moves for independence. Uh, the first priority for the countries is U.S. investors. Uh, they must be service areas. Uh, they're supposed to provide cheap labor, uh, resources, uh, markets, investment opportunities uh, these days, opportunities for exploit of, export of pollution and so on. That's the job, the service areas. Uh, and if you depart from that job, no matter how or in what way, you will be punished. Afterwards, the British stepped back in, placing Paul Schoon back in the position of governor. And the advancements that Grenada made in just four years were reversed. And the country was once again back under the control of white supremacists. We salute our noble, brave ancestor who died young seeking to establish nationhood and respect for his people and learn from his example so that we too can continue to strive for freedom and independence.
Let us be inspired by his words. Forward ever, backwards never. Why have they singled out our poor small country? Why do we stimulate so much fear in the minds of Reagan and his warlords? We have no great industries, no great banks, no gold, no oil, no diamonds, few natural resources. There is one distinguishing feature, we in small, tiny, but free. Grenada led the first socialist revolution in the English-speaking Caribbean. Our revolution has challenged the carefully built up myth that we are too small, too weak, and cowardly to stand up to dictatorship. The revolution smashed this illusion. This revolution is also a big threat being in a black country because the U.S. holds captive millions of black people in racist bondage. They are afraid that black Americans may find out and be inspired by the Grenada Revolution. So the Grenada Revolution. Amen.